hello hello everyone welcome back welcome back to my channel um the Cheryl Hubbard show so glad you can join me well um in my little uh home studio uh have my little laptop here my keyboard so I was you know one time um I was learning how to play the keyboard my son you know how to play you know a little better than me but I was just learning uh you know a few little songs but you know still kind of learn because one thing about me i procrastinate so as i did with my books i procrastinated with uh you know writing my books so my husband told me uh honey go ahead and finish get your books on out and stop procrastinating so i did that but then my husband was trying to show me how to play keyboard because he is an out of sight uh guitar player so he showed me and my son you know a little bit about the keyboard I'm, keyboard but my son picked it up real good but you know I just you know then I procrastinate with that man if I would have stuck with the keyboard I would have you know I would have uh you know learned I would have you know I would know about a hundred songs by now if I would have stuck with it but I was working on this song right here uh I was just working on something like that uh but i want to get with that you know i mean because i figured i learned the keyboard uh on the uh laptop so and um i learned the keyboard on the laptop and then so i want to be able to learn uh yes i want to be able to see i'm looking at the notes uh you know the notes right here but i want to be able to you know play without you know looking at the notes but then I want to learn, because I, I just use one hand, so I see people, they be, you know, using two hands. I be trying to figure out how you do that. C, C, G. So, you know, I'm still going to work with it. I got to get back with it. Then also I have, uh, also I have a guitar that I'm trying to work on too. So I have to, you know, go on YouTube and, uh, to get you know I want to go on YouTube so I can work so I can this uh these strings seem like they uh well, the first two seem like they from a bass. They from a bass guitar, but I, I believe it's a lead guitar. See, I have to, um, I have to, you know, work on my, um, I have to definitely work on my, um, you know, my notes and everything for the guitar, my chords and all that. So, my husband was trying to work with me with the guitar, so, but, you know, I do have a couple of guitars here. So I want to definitely work. See, this is a, you know, 
Yeah, you get to off. Mm-hmm. So. You know, that way you can see up close. But, um, I'm going to get with I get with it some more. I got to learn. So, let me try this song again. Let me see. Uh, this is G. So that's a Silent Night song. This is a Silent Night song. Let me see what other song I have. See, these are the notes I have for Silent Night. So I do, you know, I want to start back working with it. Uh, let me see. Do I have another song in here? I, mean, I need to really just focus on that one song until I learn that. You know, so I need to do. Actually, I just need to focus on this one song. See, it's Sally Night. That's going up a little too, uh, up a little too high, so sometimes you gotta judge the tone. So, silent night, holy night. I don't know, you know, I'm not the musician, I'm not the musician, I just be messing around, just messing around, playing around, but I have other. Musicians in the family, but you know, they're not here, so I'm working with what I have. I have uh, my niece, she's a very good singer, Lexi T. Uh, Lexi T, she has a lot of stuff out there. Check it out on SoundCloud, Lexi T. And I have some other singers in the family, um, Lexi Thompson, but she calls herself Lexi T, so check it out on SoundCloud. Uh, my son, uh, he goes by the name of Young Mother Man. Uh, D'Angelo Walker, he's on SoundCloud, too. And, um, my songs, too, are on SoundCloud. But, those are real musicians. I just be playing around, having some fun. You know, just something to do. You know, just something, so, much, so many things in the world happening. And um, I'll just be trying to, you know, try to create a studio. So, I want to add a few pieces as I go along. I want to add me a track board. And, uh... Some new mics, some mic stands, and I have about four four amps. I think I have four amps. I already have some amps. So, and um, what I want to do, I just want to give thanks to God for waking me up this morning and looking out for me and my family, my children, and you know all the people around the world, prayers to everybody around the world. And I know they had the um um. Uh, the services for Kobe Bryant uh, video was yesterday, so I just want to say my prayers to the Bryant family, Vanessa Bryant and her kids and, you know, the whole family, everybody in uh, California, you know, that's, uh, that has been touched by that, uh, you know, um, tragic accident of uh, Kobe Bryant, but 
So we all just have to lift each other up in prayer because we never know what's going to happen from one day to the next. And then there's just so much happening now, so many things happening. It's just, oh, uh, wow. And then this coronavirus that's going around now. And I was just, I was just looking at the news. Um, just looking at the news before I started recording, and they was talking about, uh, they were talking about, um, uh, you know, coronavirus. And CDC, now they have a warning out saying that uh, the coronavirus is more likely, most likely going to spread to the United States. Because it's uh, it started from uh, Daegu. De that's where the outbreak started, and I guess, I don't know if that's in China, or that's, you know, I know, but it's still, it's in China right now, but it did move to uh, Italy, yeah, they have reported cases in Italy, uh, Iran, and South Korea, so they said, um, we just had to be prepared for it, so the only thing we can do is pray to God, and hope that God, God, I'm going to ask you now, and if you could uh, prevent this uh, coronavirus from spreading, uh, becoming international and global. God, just let these doctors and these experts find a cure and rid this, rid the world of this deadly coronavirus. So with that, um, so that's what I, you know, I learned when I watched the, the news, the news today. Uh, so you know. So just my prayer just go out to everybody in the world because this coronavirus affects us all. So I'm just hoping that they, you know, find a cure. So I think they are creating, I think it's some doctors over here in Virginia uh, that's working on a vaccine for this coronavirus. So my prayers go out to everybody, everybody in the world because we all will be affected by this coronavirus and we all are affected as it, you know, continues to spread. Some cases, some people have uh been you know cured but some people still tested tested positive so they you know they are still in isolation and um yeah they're still in isolation so you know that's all i want to say about that but i'm just praying you know god you know please get rid of this coronavirus yes wipe it off the face of this earth yes amen god bless everyone so let me finish with my, uh, then I have a few more things to talk about. Uh, you know, once I work over here, I just want to do a few little things over here on the keyboard. I thought I had some more songs, but it seems like I only have, uh, it seems like I only have this uh, one. See, my, my uh, ponytail sometimes it gets a little, you know, I don't like it to be too wild, so I like to bring it, you know, see? But I did it, came out pretty good today. And, um, you know, I did a video previously to show you how I do my, my, uh, my, you know, my ponytail. And this, this is another item in my paparazzi accessory jewelry line. These are the earrings, but I have two different ones on, but I have, you know, I have both, uh, you know, I have two of each. So, uh, this is the one, you know, paparazzi accessories.com, 218618. Uh-huh, so... Then you see how I have a red, my red scarf. I always try to, you know, match my scarf up with mine. Um, mm -hmm. Scarf up with my, uh, you know. Then sometimes when I was, I'm doing my little videos, I always, you know, I get thirsty, my mouth dry down. So, you know, I always have these. But I do have to get some more because, um, you know, I think this is my last one till I get to the store. Mm. And when I drink, I know I sometimes you have to suck your mouth because it has like a sour taste. And it has 16 grams of fat. It has like a sour taste, but these are so good. I want to, you know, next time I go shopping, I'm going to get me a round bowl. But they only come in a four pack. Or they come in a four pack, but you can also buy a single. So I got a, uh, I bought a couple four packs, so they don't last me. I usually drink one four pack per day. 
and they are so good and not real sweet. They have a few health benefits and they help you flush your kidneys out, keep you regular. And that is 16 grams of fat, but they are not real sweet. Well, I like to use these glasses. I know people probably say, why does she like them glasses? Those are, you know, well, these are glasses you can put anything. Tea, uh, punch, juice, wine, whatever you want. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. So, let me get back on the keyboard. One more, a few more little strokes on the keyboard. And then I'm going to get into... Some other stuff I'm going to share with you all out the book. So let me try this one more time. I'm trying to see if I can remember. I know it's probably going to take me some time, but, uh, you know, let me sit down right here. Mm-hmm. So... But one side and then the other uh, notes are, oh, I guess they're sleeping heavenly. Because you, you, you can listen to the tone, sleep. Let's say. right key for that. No, that sounds like sleep and sleep. I would have to hear somebody else, you know, I'm, that's not my song, so. Excuse me. Who said I can do the whole thing? should be C G E G See, so I have to really work on this. So you gotta go salad like G A G E G See salad So, you know, just messing around, so I still have to work. 
And then uh, I know another song I was working on, uh, but I don't have it. Mm -hmm. Another song I was working on, I don't have the notes for that one. I don't have the notes, but uh, I have to, I think my notes might be on my other page, my other papers. So um, now I want to, uh, Okay, so that's the keyboard. I have to work on that a little bit more. So, also, I was reading uh, yesterday in my uh, video yesterday. I was reading uh, some stuff, you know, the book on, you know, Joe, Joe Osteen. Uh, so, in other words, he was saying in the book, um, you know, Follow your dream, follow your, follow your dream, follow your vision, vision, follow your goal. And also, uh, the next person, the friend of yours, your relative, family member, even your mother or your father, but it wasn't saying in that book, but I'm saying, any, you know, your vision is your vision, your goal is your goal, your dream is your dream. In other words, he's saying also in the book, whatever you, whatever you dream for, whatever you hope for, visualize it. Put it in front of you. Put it in front of you more. Like, I, I want that big, beautiful house. I want two or three big, beautiful homes. I want four or five uh, successful businesses. Businesses. I want excellent health for myself, Cheryl, I let Hubbard Walker, uh, myself, my family, my kids, my relatives, you know, people around the world. I want, I want the best for everyone. So, you know. So, in other words, he's, he's saying in his book, visualize it. Put it in front of you. Put it in front of you. In other words, I said, well, why not? You know, I had that book because I had that book for a while. I hadn't read it. I haven't read it. I think I stuck it back under here. Uh, uh, I stuck it somewhere. I don't know if I stuck it down under my bed or what. But, um. So he said, visualize it, put it in front of you, you know, you, you're looking for that good job, you're looking for another house, whatever you're looking for, whatever, whatever you visualize, and, and I think he was talking about, uh, I don't know if that was his sister or somebody, a friend of his, he was talking about in the book, wanted to have some kids, so what she did, she would, uh, he told her to uh, buy some baby clothes and just fix up a baby, fix up a room in your house. Just like you already have that vision, I mean, just like you already have that, you know, just like it already came um, in existence. Speak it into existence. Put put pictures around the house, you know, so you can look at it more often. Put it in front of you more. You can look at it every day. So I said, that's a good idea. You know, so those businesses, those homes that I want, um, excellent help for me and my family. I'm going to start visualizing more and putting things right in front of me. So I can, uh, you know, another one. So you can look at it. So then another thing you could do. Uh, what Steve Harvey was talking about, you can create your vision board. Create your vision board. See, on my vision board, I have excellent health, four family and friends, three big beautiful houses. See that? Three big beautiful houses. Uh, four retail businesses, successful. Uh huh. So, vision board. So, and then also I have a. That's not all. I have I have a whole list. I have a whole list of things on my vision board. You know. And I have uh yeah I have uh I have uh about four pages. So he said more than four. I got. So far, I have uh, 71. I have 71 things. So far, I have seven, 71 things on my vision board. So he's saying visualize it, 
visualize things and speak it into existence. You know? So he said when he started out, when he started out, he didn't have much. His father started out, his father built his father built that church from the ground up. You know, sometimes a lot of people think, well, you know, all these people, some people are rich and we poor and they rich and blah blah blah, but everybody we, we wasn't born nobody was born rich. So, you know, nobody. You can't come out, you know, can't come out of uh, your mother's uh, existence and then be automatically rich. So or sometimes you may can inherit some money from your, you know, rich relatives, but when they came out, they wasn't rich when they first came out. So uh, that's what my opinion is. Nobody was born rich. So in other words, you build your way up. You build your way up. So in other words, he's saying speak it into existence. Put, put things around you more where you can look at it every day. Because if you look at it every day, you start believing it. But sometimes, like he's saying, people get stuck in a rut because they only think, because where they are, they think, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is where I'm going to be the rest of my life. No, it doesn't have to be like that. So I already know I want to be rich. God, make me rich. Make me rich, God. Make my family rich. Yeah, make me rich, God. So I stick it into existence every so often, but, you know, so that's how that goes. So, I talked about uh, my keyboard, my vision board, speaking things into existence. Uh, I talked about the coronavirus. So, now uh, I want to talk about, let me see what I have. Okay. Let me go into, oh, let me, let me talk just a little bit about business, I guess. Then I'll go into my, my book and then that'll be my little presentation. Okay. So running a business, uh, well, you know, I do business, I usually talk about business because, uh, but I do want to do research on, you know, any, all aspects of business. See, my major was business down straight at university. So that's why I like to talk about something that I'm familiar with. But there's nothing wrong, I would love to touch base on topics that I don't know too much about, but, you know, because all I need to know is just give me the topic. I don't do the research. Because see, one thing about going to college I, all I did was research, so I can research any topic. I know where to go. I know how to bring up that information. I, I know how to pull out that valuable information, important information, uh, because information is powerful, knowledge is powerful. So learning is powerful. So just want to touch base, just uh, talk about business. So in other words, uh, me, I'm running a business, you running a business, she running a business, he running a business, we all running businesses. Uh, we need information, we, we need information, we need information systems, we need, first of all, we need people. We need people with human, we need managers, managers with human skills, people skills, human skills. Managers have to know how to deal with people. You can't just hire a manager and he don't know how to deal with people. He don't know how to deal with, with uh, deal with the employees or, or the customers, you know. So first of all, you have a business, in other words, nine times out of ten, you have your name of your business, you have your location, you have your niche, you already figured out your target market, you're working on your brand, you're working on your brand, you're working on your strategies, your marketing strategies, promotion strategies, advertising strategy. and as I, in my other video yesterday, I was talking about, uh, do you have a, a, a diversity strategy? So when you are hiring those people uh, that represent uh, a diverse work workforce, workplace, I would say workplace. When you're hiring those people that represent a workplace, a diverse workplace environment, uh, then, so that's why it's important to have those people skills, human skills. Managers have to have uh, those people skills, human skills, and also have to have you know, they might need technology skills. Nine times out of ten, managers need some type of technology skills. And it depends on, I guess, how big your business is and, you know, what type of business you're running. So, you know, it's just, uh, you know, just out of the ordinary. So when they have those people skills, they, can, they know how to deal with employees and know how to deal with uh, uh, customers. Sometimes you have... Uh, Customers that may not be satisfied at all times. 
for customers that may not be satisfied at all times. So you might have customers that's not satisfied at all times. So and for a call, I call back. I call back. Yeah. So um, you might have uh, customers that's not satisfied. Uh, so, you know, managers having those people skills, uh, knowledge-based skills, uh, human skills, technology skills, uh, whatever skills that manager may need for that particular position, you know. So, technology skills are very important. So, in other words, like I was saying, you're running a business, you have your target market, you have your name, you have your niche, you have your... You have your name of your business, you have your niche, you have your target market, you marketing, advertising, and promoting, try to, you know, uh, trying to get your brand out there to the customers. Um, so you're trying, you're trying to get your brand out there to your customers. You're trying to create a strong, positive, you're trying to create a strong, positive brand, um, a trustworthy brand, first and foremost. Trustworthy brand. You want a brand that people can trust. Just like Microsoft, Hewlett Packard, uh, Dell. When you buy a computer from those companies, you want to know when I hey, when I get my computer home. When I get my computer home, I'm going to do it what it say what the uh, company says it's going to do. You know, I want to go on the internet. I need to go on Microsoft Word. I need to I need to go and do some PowerPoint presentations. I need to do some. Excel spreadsheets. I need to work on some accounting. I need to do whatever I need to do on my computer. I may need to go in Notepad or, you know, um, whatever I need to do on my computer. But I wanted to do what it says it's going to do. When I purchase a company from your, when I purchase a computer from your company and your particular brand, Microsoft brand, uh, uh, Hewlett Packard brand, Dell. And those are the three name brand computer companies that I can think of right now. But they do have probably some small uh, companies that you can purchase. Well, you can purchase those products from other companies too, like uh, Fingerhut. I think Fingerhut, they sell, um, like Fingerhut, Walmart, Kmart. They do offer those those brands in their stores as well. Because I think I ordered a computer. I ordered a couple of computers from Fingerhut, and they were... Uh, one was a Dell. I think one was a Dell. I think I think actually both of them was a Dell uh, computer. Both of them were Dell computers. Uh, mm -hmm. So and I still have them to this day. So like I said, when you purchase those computers from those nice brand uh, names, then they will last you. No, so you don't want no computer, an off-brand computer that's not. This is like going out there by. A cheap pair of shoes. That's what I get buying. They're just like when I get buying a cheap pair of shoes there from from Payless or somewhere in the car. I think they went out of business, by the fact, anyway. But you go buy a pair of shoes from Payless, cost you fifteen dollars. A little cute little leather pair of shoes. They may be cute, but I mean, you know, depending on what you can afford. Sometimes, you know, I I, I shop at Payless too. I shop there too. I shop at Payless, uh, uh, Macy's, uh, um. Target, Walmart, Kmart, all of them, they all sell shoes. But I'm saying to spend fifteen dollars on a cute little leather pair of shoes that's nine times out of that nine that nine times out of ten probably not ain't gonna last that long. That's why they call them, you know, if you can get a real level, but sometimes you can't you don't have the money. I know I understand that because sometimes I don't have uh money for, you know, special things myself. I like this dress I I have on. I mean I know how to shop around. And buy cute little dresses and cute little tennis shoes that don't cost that much. And that'll uh, make them last. But when it comes to my leather shoes, I like to have a thorough leather pair. You might, when you go out there and get a cute little pair of tennis shoes, sometimes you want a nice pair of Nikes. You want a pair of Nikes or something that's going to last. But so sometimes those, um, sometimes those other little tennis shoes don't last that long. But a cute little, but then they know. 
they know that they have these Nike stores and these high price tennis shoe stores. A lot of them, a lot of times, they know that the demand is high. That's why they call them some flying demand. They know the demand is high, so that's why they jack. That's why their prices are so high. You can't get a pair of uh, Jordans. I think the highest pair, uh, the cheapest pair of Jordans you probably can get, like the new ones, they, they usually start at like one hundred fifty dollars. But I mean, I have purchased some of the older brand Jordans, sometimes seventy dollars, eighty dollars. But then also, I have some tennis shoes that I per that I paid ten dollars for, and you know, cute little tennis shoes, different colors. Some of them $10, some of them $20. And I know over here in Washington, D.C., we have a store called the uh, $29.99 store. And they have all tennis shoes for $29.99, $30. They got Reeboks, Nikes. So we frequent that store all the time. So you get a nice pair of Nikes, $30, a pair of uh, uh, Reeboks, $30. So that's good enough for me. Cause all I'm gonna do is do a little walking. You know, I like my tennis shoes. I like to put my tennis shoes on when I walk to the store. Walk to the grocery store. Most of the time, I try to drive. I try not to do too much walking because it has been so many, so much been happening. You know, shootings around in this area too. Shootings over in this area right here in Washington D.C. So Northwest, you know, Southeast is probably the worst neighborhood to live in. Southeast D.C., but you know. So Southeast, D.C., Northwest, Northeast, Southwest, so, you know, just have to be careful wherever you live. So it's like, a, it's like an epidemic going around in these different communities that have so many problems. So, you know, I try not to do too much walking, but, you know, you want a cute little pair of tennis shoes. You want a cute little pair of tennis shoes, a nice, comfortable pair that, you know, uh, you know, you want a nice, comfortable pair, a cute pair, maybe match your little outfit like this dress right here. A cute little red, a cute little red tennis shoe, or red, or even red, black, and white. A cute little red, black, and white pair of tennis shoes would be cute, or even just a plain color. A white pair, match this shirt, or I could have a red, plain red pair, a plain black pair. So, you know, right now I have like a white pair on this is uh cute little white pair of tennis shoes tennis shoes and um so then so now let's get back to the business so in other words marketing advertising promoting building your brand and then i ran across um i ran across i did some research and i ran across these terms a whole lot of you know when you're trying to build your brand i all you know and then i learned something when i looked up all when i looked in the uh when I was on the computer, and I was just, you know, out of curiosity, I was just want to get a clear definition of brand, you know, brand, branding, you know, then we got brand extension, we got brand architecture. So brand extensions, when firms use the same brand name in a different product category. In other words, you got two different product categories, but you use the same brand extension. And, you know, like Frito-Lay, uh, Coca-Cola, Frito-Lay, they may use the same brand uh, extension in different product categories. We have brand architecture, brand archetypes, brand gap. Uh, we have brand architecture, brand guidelines. So your brand guidelines, documents that can uh, help also after rebranding, the, the brand guidelines, uh, documents that can be used to help build and identify your brand. So in other words, brand guidelines help identify your brand. Then we have brand harmonization, brand experience, uh, endorsed brand, we have sub brand, uh, we have uh, on brand, on brand, supportive of a particular brand or public image. We have parent brand. Parent brand is an existing brand that gives rise to a brand extension by supporting the allied product services or by sharing this brand identity, uh, rebranding, change the corporate image of a company or organization. So in other words, you, you already have one name for your brand. Say, for instance, my brand may be uh my brand name may be um 
my brand name may be uh, Bluebirds, something, you know, anything. My brand may be Bluebirds 101, and I might want to change the whole name, change the whole company image, change my whole product line. I want to rebrand. We have service brand, product brands focus on the material performance, while the customer benefits of a service brand lies in immaterial performances. A uh, service brand, you have a service, so in other words, uh, you running, whatever you running, um, you know, a hair salon, a uh, barber shop, and you want to build your service brand. You know, you want to make sure you have great customer service. Not only that, great customer service, but great. Yeah, great customer service, in other words, you cutting hair, you still you cutting somebody's hair, you turn around, you know, you your, your beauty salon, you build your brand with, in, in your beauty salon, you still want to have good customer service, you want to teach people, you want to treat people with respect. And then we have brand standards, brand positioning, brand positioning, uh, the place you want to own in a target consumer's mind. In other words, you're getting the customers familiar with your brand. They want to trust in your brand. You become familiar with your brand. Know that, it's like, like I said, uh, Hewlett Packard, uh, Microsoft, uh, Dell. We're very, in our mind, we are familiar with those brands. So we know that when we see those brands and we purchase those brands, they already, in our minds, we know that they're going to be trusted. You know, we trust those brands because we we purchased them over the years and we, we they gained our trust. They gained our trust because when we purchased them, they always did what they said they were going to do. The companies do it by their name, by their brand. So brand positioning, brand strategy, long-term plan for the development of a successful brand in order to achieve specific goals. So long-term plan for the development of a successful brand. So. Your strategy, your brand strategy, you are going to, yeah, what is your plan for your brand? You know, long-term plan for the development of a successful brand. You want your brand to be successful. You want the customers to trust your brand. You want your brand, you want to create your brand knowing that it's going to do what the customers need it to do. You, they don't want to know that they purchased a computer from uh, uh, your company, whether it be Microsoft, uh, Dell, or Hewlett Packard, or any other computer store. They don't want to know that they purchased a computer and when they got the computer home, they couldn't even log on to the internet. The internet wouldn't even work on a computer. Uh, you know, the computer just wasn't what it said. You know, the, the company said this computer was going to do all this and that, but it didn't do nothing. It didn't do nothing that the company said it was going to do. So that is part of your brand strategy. You, know, you have to think about those things because... How are you going to have customers that's going to keep on coming back? They're not going to come back because they know I'm not. They're going to come like, look, I ain't wasting no money. I don't trust that brand. Anytime I purchase something from them, it never does. The product never does what the company says the product is going to do. And then we have uh, brand personality. Uh, we have brand valuation. Process used to calculate the value of a brand or the amount of money another party is willing to pay for it or the financial value of the brand. In other words, we know that Hewlett Packard, uh, even when you go to Target, you know, I mean, that's a brand too. You have Target and also McDonald's, uh, McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, what if you go there and um, what if you go to McDonald's and you go in there and the, the, the store is dirty and food don't taste like it used to taste and you're like, wow, McDonald's, McDonald's falling off their brain. No. You be like, McDonald's falling off their brand. You know, nah, that can't happen. Because you're so used to McDonald's. You know, but McDonald's been around. McDonald's been around since I was a little young girl. So I know I don't want to go into McDonald's and find out that, hey, y'all nah, food not tasting. But, you know, McDonald's food still tastes good out of all these years. They have brand image. Develop over time. Uh, through advertising campaigns with a consistent theme, authenticated by consumer experiences. So in other words, what are your experiences with that brand? That's the brand image. What image do you have in your mind of that particular brand? At least some good terms right here. I'm not going to read over all of them. So I'm going into 40-something minutes already. I don't want to go over an hour. But brand management. 
uh, brand management analysis planning on how developing a good relationship with the target market is essential for brand uh, for brand a brand is perceived in the, for how a brand is perceived in the market. In other words, how are you managing your brand? You're managing your brand, you're analyzing your brand because it's very important how your customers perceive your brand in their marketplace. In other words, you got McDonald's, you got Wendy's, and you got uh, you got Church's Chicken, and also uh, Chick Fil A, all those different food fast food restaurants. How do we perceive their brand in our mind? It's important to the company to know that. So when I go to McDonald's, in my mind, I perceive McDonald's as being a strong, trusted, quality, reliable brand. So that's, you know, that's what I think about McDonald's. And even when I go to Wendy, the same thing. So it's up to the company to manage their brand to where as, uh, it satisfies the customer over, over and over and over again. They're always trying to bring in and pull in new customers. And also then we have uh, brand values, financial worth of the brand. We have brand map, shows a relative position of competing brands based on how those brands are perceived by consumers. So in other words, brand map uh, it shows the, the relative position of competing brands. So in other words, McDonald's, Wendy's, Chick-fil-A, uh, uh, what do we have? Uh, uh, McDonald's, Wendy's, Chick-fil-A, and um, you know, all those different fast food uh, places. You go to Wendy's, you go to McDonald's, you go to Chick-fil-A, you want to know that, hey, they are competing against one another because they all sell french fries, they all sell burgers. Now you want to say, hey, which one, which burgers are the best? I don't know, I know Wendy's burgers are pretty good. I really don't eat hamburger. Uh, I don't eat hamburger at all. I, I got off of hamburgers and hot dogs. So usually when I, when I get any fast food, I try to get a fish sandwich. McDonald's, I may get a fish sandwich. Uh, and I, sometimes I do get fries, but I do try to get a salad or some vegetables or something. Then we have a brand agency, a firm that specializes in creating and launching brands and rebranding. Uh, brand preference, we have co-branding. Co-branding is a marketing strategy that utilizes multiple brand names uh, on, a good, on a good or service as part of a strategic alliance. Marketing strategy, strategy that utilizes multiple brand names on a good on a good or service as part of a strategic alliance. So in other words, multiple uh, it utilizes multiple brand names on a good or service. So in other words, you have a product, you have a good, but it has more than one brand name on that particular product that you go by. Uh, brand salience, uh, brand standard. Uh, I think that's it. Oh no, we have this last few uh, branding. Uh, create that in other words, when you brand, you create the name, your symbol, your design of your product. In other words, you go to the store and you buy a pack of uh, uh, corn chips. Say, for instance, you go to the store and you buy a pack of corn chips, and you know, every time you buy that uh, pack of corn chips from that same particular brand name store. That same bag of corn chips are, looks the same. It's going to already have a distinguishing design, distinguishing name, right on the front of the O, uh, because it says it creates a name, a symbol, or design. So, in other words, just like when we go to McDonald's, when we get those fish sandwiches, they usually put them right in that little tiny, uh, it looks like a little cardboard box. A little tan cardboard box, McDonald's uh, fish sandwiches. So they box all the fish sandwiches up in the same box. And then when you get their hamburgers, you see how they wrap them in that paper? The same paper. Every hamburger you buy is going to be wrapped in the same paper with the McDonald's logo on it. So then we have brand equity, the value of having a well known brand name based on idea owners can generate. Your brand, a type, your brand is a type of product manufactured by a particular company under a particular name, uh, brand assets, any digital file or document that is used for branding or uh, purposes of marketing activity, uh, brand attributes, 
are the core values that define the overall nature of the company and represents the essence of the brand. We have brand audit. Uh, brand audit is a thorough examination of a brand's current position in the market compared to its co competitors and a review of its effectiveness. So in other words, you're auditing your brand compared it to the, your, the competitor's brand. In other words, you buy a bag of corn chips or even a fish sandwich, whichever you want, you know, whichever product you're purchasing. So when you go purchase a hamburger from McDonald's, and do you compare that hamburger to uh, Wendy's hamburger when you go buy one from Wendy's? So that's a brand audit. You're examining each product, each brand name product, and looking at, you know, the different competitors. You compare, you know, you say, which one you like better? I like McDonald's hamburgers better. I like Burger King's ham or Burger King hamburgers better. Brand identity. That's the brand, brand identity. It's the visible elements of a brand, such as color, design, and logo, that identify and distinguish the brands in consumers' minds. So the brand identity is all in the consumer mind. You know, any store you go in, you know, that brand identity is in your mind. You know, you go to, you go purchase a pair of jeans, a dress, you go to Macy's. You know, same thing as you go to Macy's and you, you know, you purchase um, uh, something from Macy's, a coat or a pair of jeans, a dress or whatever. And uh, that brand identity is going to be in your mind. When you take that product home or that dress or that coat and you begin to wear it or you look at it every day, you're like, oh, wow. Once you wear it for a while, you like you gonna you gonna be worried, you gonna be thinking about how it fits, how it looks, the brand name, and that's gonna be etched in your mind. So you might want to purchase it again. See, that's why I, when I'm talking, when I talk about having that quality product, that quality customer service, you buy that product, and you're like, oh, I will purchase this again. You don't want to go back. You went down to Macy's, you bought a coat, you bought a dress, and it was just what you wanted. The brand was nice. The brand identity, the brand identity was great. The brand audit was great. The brand attributes, the brand assets, the brand equity, everything, everything about their product was on the one. And then I will go back and purchase. I don't mind going back and purchase. The customer service down Macy's uh, was great. So when you say, oh, the customer service was great, and the dress that I bought, bought the coat that I bought, I will purchase it again. And you will be definitely glad to go right back to Macy's and say, I will. I don't mind buying again. So that's what I, when I talk about my business in my, um, you know, my previous videos, I talk about how that great customer service, that competitive advantage that keeps the customer coming back. You want that competitive advantage, you know. Then I was talking about um, diversity, uh, Diversity, uh, you know, within organizations, companies practicing uh, diversity. They pra they're practicing diversity to keep up with uh, their competitive advantage. So out there in the market, there are so many companies out there that's in competition with your company. So you want to keep that competitive advantage. You want to be able to, you know, have that competitive advantage because you want to be able to draw in a mass amount of customers. And then also you want your uh, previous customers, I would say, to keep coming back. And also you want to have some new customers. You want to create those <coughs> sales funnels. So create those sales funnels, keeping those customers in their queue so they can eventually become, well actually they're potential customers when they are under the sales funnel. But they're becoming their potential customers, then you want them to become actual customers. Once they think they uh, you have something that they want and they need, then that's when they're going to begin to start purchasing. So these are just the terms that I, uh, you know, brand, branding, all uh, my little branding terms. So all uh, my little branding terms. So I'm up on 50, so I'm going to... Uh, and then also I just want to touch base on, you know, you work, you run your company, and then I'll say you keep up with technology, you keep up with your technology, um, 
technology trends because technology, information technology brings in that vital information into your company. So I just want to touch base on, um, you know, if you're dealing with it in your home, you might want to make your home smart, so that's technology. Even in companies, they, they still might have, uh, 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 maybe they have a smart company. I know I haven't heard anybody say anything about a smart company, but I know about the smart homes. We got smart TV, smart TVs, smart washes. You know, everything can be smart. You got your dishwasher, your, um, let's see, I think you got your dishwasher, uh, your refrigerator. So a lot of things that you can make smart. So your, you know, dishwasher, your TV, your refrigerator, uh, maybe your microwave. You know, a lot of things, your garage door, a lot of things you can make smart. But then we have we said smart TV, watches, we have wireless, a seller, a seller, a seller, what a seller meter, a seller meter. That's what it's saying. Google Glass, we have a GPS jacket, smart socks. I never seen any smart socks, but we have GPS smart shoes, smart contact lenses, and smart wigs, and then the smart home. Make your house smart. You don't have to get up and do nothing. You got a remote, you just hit a button, you don't even have to be home. You can you can turn up turn on your lights, turn off your lights, uh, turn on, turn off, turn up the heat. You can turn up the heat, turn the heat down, turn the heat up. Maybe you can turn the stove on, turn the stove off. So, you know, uh, I mean a smart house, uh, you know, it's it's cool and all. I wouldn't mind having something like that, but that's that's for, you know, I guess I know that would be very expensive. Then all, uh, you know, we have Google. Google Glass, the Google Glass, they're basically those glasses. Google Glass, uh, smart glasses, optical, optical glass, head mounted display design in the shape of eyeglasses. Uh, it was developed by X, or uh, Google X, I guess, with the mission of producing an ambiguous computer. So basically, they like computers, and you probably can go on the internet right, right on your dang on eyes. <laughs> Uh, producing uh, ambiguous, a ambiguous computer, Google Glass displayed information in a smart, uh, what is it, a smart uh, phone like or a smartphone like hands free format. Uh, where is communicating with the internet via natural language uh, and voice commands? So it works like a computer. So basically, probably just like you know, they have your smart watches. I had a couple smart watches that I ordered, but they never came. So I'm gonna have to order them again. We got your smart watches. I guess they're gonna have smart rings next. So you have your uh, your Google Glass. They work like a little computer. So you know, those things are good to have. Everything. So also to me, uh, technology is moving forward, but forward. But I believe, you know, I mean, I always say that if there is a business for everything. So you know. I always say there's a business for everything. And this book right here. And then this is just talking about um uh management. This is contemporary, it's a contemporary business book. So in other words, you run a business and you want to make sure you motivate your manager, you want to make sure you motivate your employees. Management techniques designed to improve motivation. Uh management by objectives. The management by objectives approach was first pr proposed nearly 50 years ago. It was popularized in the early 1950s by Peter Drucker, who described it this way. The objectives of the, the district manager's job should be clearly defined by the contribution he and his district sales force had to make to the, to the sales department. The objectives of the project engineer's job by the contribution he uh, he, his engineers and drafts and make to the engineering department. This requires each manager to develop and set the objectives of his unit himself. Um, and then it goes on to say, um, higher management must, of course, reserve the power to approve or disapprove his objectives, but their development is part of a manager's responsibility. Indeed, it is his first responsibility. So management by objectives. Uh, it says first steps 
the first steps in um first steps uh in an MBO program. Each subordinate discusses the job description with the manager. Uh, Short-term performance goals are established. The subordinate meets regularly with the manager to discuss progress toward the goals. Intermediate checkpoints are established to measure progress toward the goals. At the end of a defined period, man, uh, manager and subordinate together evaluate the results of the subordinate's efforts. Management by objectives involves mutual goal setting by manager and subordinate. Both must reach an understanding about the subordinate's major area of responsibility and the acceptable level of performance. So in other words, management by objectives. So what are your objectives? So in other words, you have a, you run an organization, you are the manager, and your objective is to motivate these employees, make sure they, make sure the employees are empowered, make sure they're inspired, make sure they are, uh, they're motivated, they're inspired, and they are, you know, they are willing to do what they need to do. Once you motivate them, you have to motivate your employees as a manager. So I'm not going to go talk too long on this, but I'm going to have to come back. We have job enrichment. Job enrichment means giving workers more authority to plan their work and to, and to, the, and to decide how it is to be accomplished and allowing them to learn related skills or to trade jobs with others. Job enrichment. So you're motivating your employees, you're the manager, you're motivating your employees, uh, you're creating job enrichment on the job. So sometimes job employees can swap jobs, they can learn. Somebody doing this job, they used to do this job, but you're giving them this, this assignment, you're giving this employee this other assignment, they can learn. You know, so let me do your assignment. You do my assignment for a change. I'm learning how to do your assignment. You learn how to do mine. Sometimes it may require training too, maybe. Uh, then we have, uh, let me see. I'm not going to read too much more into this. Because uh, time, because I talk so much, you know. I have been talking so much. So like I said, you know, so, you know, I was talking about the branding and all different types of brands, you know, then I talked about, you know, technology. Uh, so, um, but, you know, running a business, uh, you have your name, you have your business name, you're working on your brand, you have your niche, your target market, your inventory. Uh, you know, terms, I just went over, branding, co-branding, brand equity, brand assets, uh, brand attributes, brand audit, brand identity, so many different types, types of brand, <coughs> branding, brand values, brand map, brand agency, brand preferences, you have brand co-branding, brand salience, uh, saliences, brand standards. So in other words, when you're creating your brand, you definitely have to go by certain standards and guidelines for you when you create your brand. You know, when you're picking your name, you're designing that particular product. Uh, endorsed brand, sub brand, on brand, parent brand, it's just rebranding, uh, service brand. It's, you know, you have your service brand, your product brand. In other words, you, you create the service, you cutting hair, your permanent hair and all that, that will come under the service brand. Uh, so you still have to, you know, because that's very important too. People, a lot of times we may not think about the service brand. We just may, we may think of uh, one word, which is just brand, branding too, you know. But when I ran across all these other brands, the other, these, other, these other brand terms, I was like, wow, really? But um, that's good. See, everything's a learning process. So if I wouldn't have did my research, I would never even knew that these words were available. So, but that's good. I'm gonna read more about these. I'm gonna read more of these words right here because that is very important. So running a business, you branding, rebranding, co-branding. Uh, you're a manager. You're an owner. You're bringing that vital information in. Uh, creating those information systems, you know, that's just setting up that system so 
and can run smoothly and bring in bring in that information. You need that vital, important information within an organization so you can make your day-to-day -day decisions. Managers need to make decisions. Uh, that's when then we come in with um, managerial accounting. So when you gather all your information within an organization, uh, managers have to make that uh, those those uh, decisions. And then we have uh, financial accounting. Financial accounting, you have your auditors, your auditors, your credit unions, your banks. They need uh, your accounting information, your business accounting information. You know, auditors, banks, credit unions, C, uh, security, securities and exchange commission. Uh -huh. They need your uh, financial information at the, end of, at the end of these accounting cycles. Uh, so, you know, and then, then what if you want to get a loan? You start the business. Say, for instance, I'm starting the business. Uh, I need $100,000 to start my business. Uh, can I get it from the credit union or banks? Or uh, can I get it from the credit union or the bank? I mean, probably not, but, you know, somebody out there maybe may have enough credit, enough uh, equity in their business to get a loan, but I probably wouldn't. But, uh, you know, <laughs> really? <laughs> But, so, but what I'm saying is, your financial statements have to be in order. They have to be in order. Your income statements, your balance sheet, your statements of owner's equity. Because the credit unions and the banks will want to look at those statements. Because they want to know, can uh, this lady right here, can her business, can, can she pay this money back if I give her a loan? If we give her a loan from this credit union so she can open her business, she can start her business. How is she, we want to know how is she going to be able to pay us this money back? How well has her business been doing over the years? Over that first year? Or even over five year period? Over the years? Make it plural. So how long has her business, how long has she been in business? How long has she been, been in business? How well is her business doing? What is the, uh, when they look at your financial statements, you know, when they look at my financial statements, they will say, well, you know, I'm looking at her balance sheets. Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. I want to look at that, uh, her balance sheet. And I also want to look at um, her statement of cash flows. I want to look at um, her uh, net income through her income statement. Uh, revenues minus expenses. I want to look at her revenues minus her expenses and what is her net income before we think about giving her a loan from this credit union or from this bank. Because Bank of America, uh, SunTrust, uh, Navy, I'm not Navy Federal, but uh, Wells Fargo, those type of banks, they are going to want to see your financial books before. Because you can say, hey, you think it's easy. Well, I want to go in there, I want to start a business. Maybe the bank is not going to lend me some money. The bank is not going to lend you any money until they look at those financial statements. They want to see how well your company, you know, is doing. How well is your company doing? Let me look at those financial statements. You know, you have your accounting department set up. Let me see those. Uh, let me see those uh, papers. Let me see those statements. So, class, I mean not class, but YouTubers, thanks for joining me. I can talk about this business all day. I was working on my keyboard earlier. I was working on that, but I'm going to get with that a little bit more, do a little bit more practicing. And uh, I want to say thanks for joining me today, YouTubers. And I will see you on my next video. But uh, subscribe below. Give me some ideas. I, I just be playing around, trying to create some great content, uh, working on my keyboard, trying to learn a little bit more. Maybe I'll get my son to help me. And this is, um, this is my song in the background. So, what I want to do, I think I'm going to work in here a little bit longer. I think I'm going to create a remix for the two songs that I did, because I can't seem to get no, no other song together, but you know, really. But, so, what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to create a remix for those two songs and see how, see what I can pull together. But, I want to say thanks for joining me. Subscribe below. Comment below. You know. I mean, my mic is not on, you know, I just like holding it, don't, you know, really, I just, I just like to hold it, but I didn't plug it up, because see, this, this uh, mic right here has to be plugged up to my amp, and sometimes the amp makes a lot of noise, so what I want to do, 
I'm gonna get, I wanna get, I wanna purchase me a, a, a wireless mic. See, it's not on, but I just like to hold it. I just like to hold it. It has to be plugged up into an amp, but I didn't plug it in, so. I plugged it in one time, but then it doesn't really have that, the loud, you know, amp, the loud uh, microphone um, volume that I need, but it's my keyboard. I'm gonna be working on this, you know. So thanks for joining me, and I want to say I'll see you next time, same place, same time, same channel, the Cheryl Hunter Show, so you'll never know what to expect. You'll never know what to expect on the show, but everything's going to be on an up and up. No, you know, it's going to be all great, empowering, empowering, inspirational, uh, inspiring. Inspiring, empowering, and inspirational, you know, just all around great talk, learning. I'm just a learning process for me. So I want to uh, say thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Same place, same channel. I am the accountant for real, for real, but this is the Cheryl Hubbard Show. And I want to see you back here again. Subscribe below, comment below, and um. I want to work on a remix for my, you know, my music, so I want to create more music. You know, I'm just going, you know, just messing around, just playing around. Just messing around, playing around. So, I want to say thanks for joining me, and I'll see you back here very soon. Same place, same time, same channel. Cheryl Hubby Show, and you all have a good one. Prayers to all of you. Prayers around the world. Prayers to all of you. All right. God bless you, and have a good one.